Hello, welcome. My name is Shaquille Feldbaum, and to some of you, it might be familiar that I'm a huge car nut, and I really go into detail and study these cars and the, the kind of the changes that go from uh, the sport version or the regular road version, I should say, to the race car, and then go back to the street race car and everything. So I just kind of thought it might be cool to have a video where I go into detail on how I kind of look into these finer details. So um, to start off, I wanted to go into the 720s, going to uh, the 720s to the race car, and then from to the road track. So from the front angle of this car, design-wise, I really don't have a lot to say. I'm big on form follows function, and this is just one of those cars that that does that so um yeah i don't really have too much of a comment on it it's just when you go to the 765 lt that it kind of becomes i don't know I, it, this is a little bit underwhelming for me and that is really weird to say when you're looking at basically a hyper car that is extremely fast and everything but i just think that if you look at the differences between these two cars that they haven't gone quite wild enough i should say so uh, basically the changes are all of the black carbon bits that are on the bottom there's a little bit of a front fascia change in this component with uh, the front bumper uh, you can see on the regular version there's like a line here that is going down into the air intakes and everything and now they lifted that line up and kind of increased that whole uh, air intake ratio on the on the bottom section of the bumper um, also what they changed is here from the air intake you can see if you zoom in a little bit that there's a crease here in this uh, actual line and then from the crease it kind of goes inward towards the headlight and if you go back to the standard version then you can see that there is no such crease in there that is just straight from the body panel into the headlight design and um, yeah I just think that if you go through all of these changes change it up a little bit more because the problem that now comes with just making like the, a little bit of an add-ons and not really changing the body in white is that your car eventually ends up looking just like an aftermarket car that somebody else made so um that is kind of my problem with it is that this car and this car don't really seem you wouldn't be able if you haven't had a, like a lot of knowledge you wouldn't be able to pick which one came from the factory and which one came from like an aftermarket part of course this one has like fins on it and crazy stuff like that and that makes it a little bit easier to recognize but i think as an aftermarket company if i would like be given an opportunity to design a car like this i think i would be able to come up with something that is a little bit more extreme and a little bit more away from the 720s if you see what i'm saying so that would be my only commentary on it and um but that is just from the front facing angle though so that is, um, and then here we have the 720 GT3. So this is where they uh, kind of take their inspiration from to make the 765. Because if you look at the front angle now, you can see that this white line that they're following along the air intake at the, at the front bumper, that is kind of the same line that they've also been using in um, the actual 765. So that is here is basically the same section. And then here they have brake air intake ducts. And you can see that that is very similar to, to what they have here. Of course, this panels now blocked off but they have those in case that they're on a track where they don't really require a lot of uh, brake cooling then they can block it off but if you have a track where it is more stop and go and you need a lot of brake cooling then you can open it up to a certain degree however much you need it to keep the air uh, to keep the brake temperature where you need it to be so that is something that they kind of took from it and also just um the fact that they enlarged it from the regular version because you can see that here the distance from this line to uh actually like the the this how do you call it like the split section between the top and the front surface of the bumper you can see that here that distance is way longer from where the actual air intake starts and all of that so that is kind of what they took from the race car i guess from the front angle um, and also you can see like the wing end plates here from the front splitter uh, that is also very similar to the, the street car that they have and do they still they actually I think what they're doing is that they eliminate that front exit of air here here the air outtake and maybe that becomes like the brake cooling instead of and then just closing this off and keeping it closed that is actually weird I have not noticed that before so they probably don't run like the regular radiator here. It's just a braking cooling duct. That's also probably cool to see. I like I like race cars like that for these reasons too. Uh, the whole fact that the air outtakes here also with the side panels because that is very reminiscent of the way that the actual race car is. So you can see here that they have like strakes to um, 
kinda let that tire wake not come back towards the back surface and just flow of the car way easier. So that is kind of like a boundary layer separation that um, the diffuser can keep creating cleaner downforce instead of being disturbed by airflows coming off the, the rotating wheels and everything. So that is what um, these end plates on, at the side are doing and that is kind of directly taken off of the race car. So that is a very cool touch to me and something that definitely should be implicated in a, a road version of the race car of your street car, if that makes sense. So, um, like Chris Harris said, uh, all of these naked gizzards and whatever, like from McLaren, are always in my favor. So I like those. Um, what I didn't like is the fact that the, the the actual exhaust pipes were like coming up here. I feel like if it was flush and just sitting downward a little bit more, I think that would have been a little bit of a better solution. Or they should have just went straight like 600 LT, where the tail light are in front of the spoiler actually. And, um, but I don't know if they would be able to do that with this uh, configuration, but that would maybe be a little bit more in the Senna 600 LT family tree, I guess, as like extreme McLaren track cars. I think that's a little bit of a missed opportunity, but maybe they wanted, didn't want to do too much of the same thing again and again. So again, I also understand that point. Yeah, but a whole lot else is not really changed or, you know, just made a differentiation between like the body and wide and everything when it comes to the street car and the road car and the track version to the track road car but that is just my disappointment with the whole mclaren range is that they don't really differentiate too much between street cars and uh, track oriented street cars in the body and white and that how many changes they make to actually put a different product down on the street and that is something that i think they should do more of i think the 675 LT should be more edged towards kind of like the Senna than it should be towards the 720S. I think it is a little bit too much on the left side and it could be a little bit more extreme. I think they should have changed the body and white a little bit more. That's just my opinion, my conclusion, what I would do if I was them. So um, next up, Ferrari 488 GTB. As you can see here that on the front of the car, there's like a little bit of a wing section to help air kind of flow underneath the car, create a little bit of a low air pressure zone beneath it, uh, kind of a splitter effect, I guess, and also helps kind of funneling air into these uh, radiators. And I think because this is a turbo car, so it will probably have some engine radiators sitting here in the front, and then this would be like for turbo intercooler probably. Um, and then you have some air outtakes to kind of channel all the air away again and to have some, you know, a, a relief of air temperatures and everything. So um, that is kind of the functionality and the arrow of the, the, the purpose and everything on the front end. And if you then take a look at the pistol, it is way different because now it's not like some uh, air intake that is just you know clean or flowing out of the, the front center there's like an actual s duct shape in there to kind of um you know generate more of like an air air tunnel on the front to generate that downforce and also there's like air insects here that is feeding radiators and then bleeding out in the side section here to also help with the, tur the, the tire wake and all of that so there's like a really different treatment at the front end of the car completely there's not like there's just a little bit more extreme of what it already was but it's like a whole different method of thinking about stuff and I think that is that is just what the the sport version of for Ferrari looks way more aggressive than just the regular one. And also if you look at like the initial the initial line on the front bumper the way that that is just way sharper than it is here that kind of also gives that effect of I'm coming at you more it's like a, a more aggressive shark or something. I don't know how to put it but it's just yeah it's just it's all there it's just all there to make you feel a little bit more special than with the regular car for the piece on the rear side you can actually see that uh kind of similar to what the mclaren did that it had like these uh end plates they kind of integrated that into the body and to also have like a section where pressure from the wheel arch or brake temperature however you want to call it can uh exit and also have a way bigger and aggressive diffuser but they actually changed the body in white this is not the same body panel as you can see here there's a way bigger 
um, kind of spoiler effect going on with this rear deck lane and the treatment of the whole body panel section is way more sculpted it's more three-dimensional if you ask me it's it's like it's a new generation of car and i really like seeing that so that is kind of my ferrari kind of take on it and they came up with a bunch of different iterations for it by now but um they started off with like a more angular front end that they had like sort of like a half of a hexagon shape to it and um that kind of blending in towards the lights because that kind of carries the same shape and everything so that kind of made it nice and integrated i think this is more like the front section of a of ventador i think it took a lot of inspiration from that because that is like the big brother car but um i think by taking the big brother car and kind of making it smaller i think that is kind of the approach with this car they kind of made it safer in some way it doesn't really look enough lamborghini-esque i think it has a lot of audi in it but I don't know that is just kind of my assessment of it and then if you go to the performance I think that they, they took out a little bit of that that front end angular nature I guess it's kind of more smoothing out here but then they did put a little bit of a more aggressive accent on how that kind of smooth line meets the headlights so there's still that same line coming down but then as if they just took the regular one and dropped the regular line a little bit down to give it a little bit more of that aggressive hunch I guess but that is kind of um, the changes that it took. And I also think that that is something that they took from the actual race car because if you go to that car, you can see that that line is just a little bit lower and just rounded off instead of having those sharper contours. So that is also like a nice cue for me to see that Lamborghini is also one of those companies that looks at their race cars and actually learns from them and then applies the same technology back into the road cars because I feel like that is what those race cars should be about so um yeah that is kind of my assessment on it and then if you look at like the front bumper section this whole air intake section because it is a naturally aspirated car so that is also why you probably don't see like massive air intakes here because it already has that coolant and everything going on in the front so uh if it would have turbochargers then you would need air intakes here but also have a massive air intake there for intercooling and all of that so that is kind of um, also like engineering philosophies that then show through the body shape of the car. Uh, um, and that is also like the form follows function stuff that I'm that I'm really into and paying attention to. So, um, yeah, with this car going on to the Performance, uh, I, I really like the way that this front end is just way more aggressive. It is just like take the, the, the whole Huracan, but this whole section is just different from the other car. And that system kind of allows the car to generate more downforce on the outside uh, wheels during cornering. So um, to be honest with you, I don't really know if that is such a benefit because their downforce is downforce and you also would want just uh, the, the maximum amount of downforce on the inside of your tires when you're going through a corner. So maybe they put more of a balance on actually having a, a level ride than actually the amount of downforce. But I feel like if you would put that on track and you would have the system just operating at its maximum. So to create just the maximum amount of downforce instead of only in one place, that it would be faster still. But I don't know, maybe there's something to it. But that would be a good video on YouTube. Like... If somebody could take a car, turn that system off and do a lap uh, time and then put it on and see what the actual difference in time would be. Um, I would be interested in seeing that. But um, yeah, but that is kind of for the performance on the front angle and also with the GT3 car. And you can also see that even though they kind of cut a little bit of, um, you know, they still have an air intake on the front. They made it way bigger at the rear for the race car. So um yeah, I think this car is also like of the front wheel drive of it has been eliminated for the GT3 regulations. So they probably have a little bit more space to put these air ducts and everything in there because there is no longer like a massive big differential uh, in there. Just stuff like that. I like to see what kind of different changes mechanical components do also to the exterior and the aerodynamic performance of a car. So if you look at the Performance, you can kind of see that they went to uh, like, like instead of having the quad exhaust, they just went with a double exhaust uh, and it's just a little bit more aggressive when it comes to having uh, air leaving the car and it's just way more open. You see just one grill coming out here and maybe there's some here, but you can see it on this picture. 
but then you can see that that grill has been not only enlarged but also like you have a massive diffuser and and it's kind of like a double diffuser because the actual bodywork of the car stops here and then it just drops down so all of it is all of this is like an air exit and a double diffuser effect creating more downforce and um also because it is at the rear i think also a little bit less air resistance so and then for the actual um race car you could see that this is probably something with the exhaust that they, they are, have done for the performance that came straight off the race car so that is also something that even though i like the older exhaust better i do think that form follows function and if this leads to a better resulting like even power delivery or emissions or fuel usage or whatever then go with what works and if you kind of listen to how that car sounds then this is way louder so it probably maybe does something for airflow for them shorter pipes all of that so maybe less back pressure on the engine so that is um, kind of something that yeah that i kind of found interesting on the hurricane so yeah and i would really like to drive one of these cars one day but we'll figure out how to make that happen but it's gonna happen if you like this content please leave a like or subscribe to this youtube channel i think i need something like 70 more subscribers to get to a thousand and i'll find something cool to give away when i reach a thousand i've been making like automar piquet wall clocks 3d printing them putting actual clock mechanisms in here so you know it will actually run and you can change out these face plates so i can make like different versions of the same watch that you have like different styles i can also make rolexes and all of that so i'm just designing a whole bunch of stuff making products generating things and sharing my thoughts on things that other people must have made and design and stuff like that so if you enjoyed that type of content please leave a like or subscribe to this youtube channel and i will be seeing you guys in future content my name is shaquille felbum i'm out